During the time of the German separation, the course of the border between East and West was not always straight and logic. In and around Berlin there was a number of enclaves and exclaves. Today we take a look at Klein Glienicke and at the end of this video you will know why Klein Glienicke was also known as the appendix of the German Democratic Republic. Hi and welcome to another East Germany Investigated video. Today we are in Klein Glienicke, a small village only a few hundred yards away from the famous Glienicke Bridge. Let me show you around and tell you how it was during the GDR era. Around 1900, Klein Glienicke was a place where the rich lived. On summer weekends, people from Berlin, which by then had become a city of 2 million inhabitants, used to go to Klein Glienicke to visit its bars and restaurants and to enjoy the park and its waterside location. In the years that followed, two important things happened that would play a big role in the future of Klein Glienicke. First, the Teto Canal was finished, which gave Klein Glienicke an even more attractive position by the water. Second, as part of an administrative reform, Klein Glienicke now came under the borough of Teto district, which was and is not part of Berlin, but of Brandenburg, the region surrounding Berlin. After the Second World War, Germany was divided and freedom of the Klein Glienicke inhabitants became increasingly restricted. Barbed wire was installed at the beginning of the 1950s and in the early 60s the Berlin Wall was built. Due to the municipal boundary and the Teto Canal, Klein Glienicke suddenly became a walled-in exclave with only one access road and was therefore also called the Appendix of the GDR. During the preparation of this video, I was in contact with the Klein Glienicke Citizens Association, who provided some interesting information that I will share in this video. The Klein Glienicke Bürgerverein is an active group of people that, besides building playgrounds, also cares for Klein Glienicke's history. A few years ago, they interviewed a number of the inhabitants and collected their stories about the time of the Berlin Wall. They have published a few interesting ones on their website. You'll find the link in the description. When Klein Glienicke was walled in, this bridge was the only access to the village. There was a guardhouse and a barrier. Inhabitants needed to show their ID, which had to have a special stamp. Visitors needed to apply for a permit well in advance. Spontaneous visits were not possible. Also, any workers who went there needed a permit and were accompanied by border guards during their work. Permit applications were often rejected. A second bridge, the Enva Pasha Bridge, had previously existed, but it was blown up at the end of the Second World War in 1945 and was never rebuilt. We take a left turn into the Waldmüllerstraße and follow the street for about 150 meters. This building was originally built as hotel restaurant at the beginning of the 1900s, but is now a private house. The lettering on the façade, however, dates from the GDR era, when it was a grocery store. Konsum was a national cooperative in the German Democratic Republic, but the brand still exists in some eastern German regions today. Klein Glienicke is relatively small. It currently has about 600 inhabitants. During the years of the wall there were a lot fewer. After the closure of the border in the 1950s, people started leaving the village because they didn't like the feeling of being hemmed in by barbed wire, but also because they just wanted to leave the GDR. Although most of the original inhabitants were allowed to stay, the authorities also brought people to Kleinglienicke that were more loyal to the party. The 150 years old Klein Glienicke Chapel in the Wilhelm Leuschner Straße was hit hard during the Cold War. First of all, after Klein Glienicke became a restricted area, there were fewer church members. In the socialist state of East Germany, religion and consequently also churches were not regarded favorably. And so, only makeshift repairs were able to be carried out. Until 1965. In that year, on the 7th of May, three craftsmen were working on the roof, guarded by two border guards. When one of the border guards suddenly walked away, against regulations, two of the craftsmen seized their chance. They disarmed the remaining guard, took their ladder and climbed over the Berlin Wall, keeping the border guard at a distance with warning shots. 
The two border guards, but also the remaining third roofer who had stayed behind, got prison sentences of up to two years. Further renovations were forbidden and the chapel fell into disrepair. The story more or less repeated itself in 1972. During repair work on the organ by two organ builders, one of them grabbed a ladder and escaped over the wall. After that, there were no more repairs to the organ. After the fall of the wall, the chapel was restored to its original state. Also, a new organ was installed. On the other side of the street was the former retirement home, in German Feierabendheim. Until the 90s, the building, which is now heritage protected, was in bad condition. Also, the way the elderly were treated was an issue, mainly because of poor sanitary conditions. The building was sold to an architectural firm about 15 years ago and now contains private homes. Klein Glieneke, an exclave in West Berlin, had in its turn three undeveloped parcels of land that belonged to West Berlin, so there were three enclaves within an exclave. The Klein Glieneke Cemetery is located in the northwesternmost point of the village. Because of its proximity to the border, people needed a special permit to go there, a so-called Grabkarte, a grave card. As a precaution, the East German authorities moved the graves located near the border fence and laid flat any large gravestones that people might hide behind. In the last few decades, the cemetery has been restored, but you can still see traces of the border. For the inhabitants of Klein Glieneke, during the years before 1989, it wasn't very hard to escape to the west if they really wanted to. The problem was that family and sometimes also friends that were left behind would be severely punished. And of course, escaping from the GDR would mean you would never see your friends and family again. In 1973, two brothers and their families, nine people in total, successfully escaped through a 10 meter long tunnel that they dug from the basement of their house to the garden of the castle Jagdschloss Glienicke. However, not all escape attempts ended happily. Some people died while trying to get to West Berlin. Klein Glieneke also contained the narrowest point of the GDR. Following the Wannseestraße to the eastern part of the village, you had to go through a narrow passage of only a few meters wide. The distance from the northern border with West Berlin to the southern border to West Berlin was only 10 to 15 meters. Due to the border fortifications on each side, the roadway was only 4 to 5 meters wide. That Kleinglinike is a special place is underlined by the fact that parts of the village are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Palaces and Parks of Potsdam and Berlin. Despite the lack of sunshine, I found it very interesting to explore Klein Glienicke today. If you'd like to visit Klein Glienicke as well, you can easily combine it with the Glienicke Bridge or Park Babelsberg. You can also do a historical tour with a quiz created by the Klein Glienicke Citizens Association. It's available in English and German. I'll leave the link in the comment section. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.